Well, good morning there, Tuberesis. Ah, uh, very basic message today. First of all, give myself a shot of kvass. Mmm, good stuff. Got it in the Bolshoi bottle. So, got enough to, la to last me through the next couple of videos anyway. So our basic message today is that uh, libertarians, as the term is understood in the North American movement, are destroying freedom. Well, as though that makes no sense, libertarians are about maximizing the autonomy of the individual. Yes, but in a one-dimensional context, that of freeing the individual from the state. They wish to see the state reduced to near zero and as close to Marxist scenario of its withering away as feasible. Yeah, so what's wrong with that? The flip side is their equal determination in deconstructing the state to privatize its functions. Police, other public services like prisons, education, courts, garbage pickup, and to abolish certain public sector competitors like government, health care, and social security, as well as abolish progressive taxes to fund these services and all regulation and oversight of private activity. They see themselves as the new abolitionists, a tiny movement whose ideals will eventually emerge triumphant uberallies. Allied with these new abolitionists are new carpetbaggers, specifically uh, an exploding expansion of corporate power and concentration, which has occurred not just in mergers and acquisitions or the corporation's general role in society, but of corporate management over the employee. Under the umbrella of property rights, employers, those who actually left in the U.S., can place employees under Orwellian surveillance, extract samples of body fluids and DNA at will, control how they spend their private time, dismiss them at will, break any attempt at self-organization among employees, deny them a living wage by fighting the minimum wage, and negotiated benefits. In short, their move is to turn the working person to a rightless serf as long as they are on the master's property. The equivalent of a sharecropper in the Mississippi Delta of 1911. All that's missing is debt peonage. Wait! We have credit cards now, don't we? And pro-creditor bankruptcy laws. All that's needed is debtor's prison. By privatizing as much as possible, the public citizen is being turned into a servant of private, unaccountable power. That is why corporate America pours so much of its vast resources into the libertarian movement, specifically its political incarnation in the Tea Party movement, but also stink, I mean think tanks like the Cato Institute. The L movement is, or has allowed itself to become, the shell game of corporate power and convincing befuddled young intellects that subjection to private power equals public freedom. Well, as of I hear we American libertarians are against corporations too. Is that is that true? Is that right? It's uh, true there are different denominations, just like some Christians dunk rather than sprinkle or handle snakes and talk in tongues or believe the Virgin Mary will appear as a water stain on the wall. But the effective majority of them in practice are preaching the doctrine of maximizing private power over society and the destruction of accountable government. I don't hear them preaching against private power in their manifestos and blogs and blogs. To the contrary, they are allied with traditional conservatives in protecting property and its rights and status, and their civil rights involving real property, but very quiet on, any, on anything else. The idea that the worker's labor is his property and he can withhold it as he pleases in combination with others to guarantee its full market value was totally foreign to him, I suspect because of his upper middle class background and biased education. That this is happening in the U.S. and to a lesser extent in Britain and Europe is no coincidence either. The U.S. already has one of the freest regimes on the planet in terms of individual rights. This kind of hothouse movement can flourish only where the individual already has considerable autonomy. Interesting in places where people have known actual tyranny and actual chaos, as we continue to see in the Arab world, most notably in the present mess in Libya, you don't hear them espousing this kind of ideology. They want government that's honest, uncorrupt, itself obeying the laws it enforces, accountable to them, the people, in the form of elections and fundamental rights, which may not be trampled on any more than their physical bodies. Sound utopian? Well, that's also what the Bill of Rights of the U.S. Constitution mandate, as well as the English Bill of Rights, and the French Rights of Man and the United Nations Universal Declaration, another institution the our L folks want to abolish, of course. So, abolishing the Constitution itself as a government agency of tyranny seems to be the final step of the L movement. 
abolishing the state also does away with impartial referees between the claims of right of two parties. All that's left is the rule of money or force and whatever justice you can pay for or just take. Of course, states don't create rights any more than the treasury creates the value of the money it orders printed. Our rights to freedom and enjoyment thereof in non-destructive ways are intrinsic to our natural right to life. All too often the state does and has violated these. But transferring state power to private hands does nothing of itself to ensure greater freedom or protection, any more than merely nationalizing private property will by itself ensure social justice for workers or the public. What is essential is the goal of such action. When privatization is offered not just as an economic model, but as peddled as the very foundation of human society. In a society already renowned for the public and private freedoms it already enjoys, prides itself before the world on its democratic process of rule of law, as the very model for such things, you can be sure it's an attack, ladies and gentlemen, on the very foundations of those public rights and liberties. In civic life, to remove the state-funded playground monitors and turn the playground into a predator's field for bullies and gangbanging. In the economic sphere, to turn you into an employee, a subject, into that Mississippi sharecropper of a century ago with not even the protection of your physical person from private violence, no longer guaranteed. Whoops, wonder who is knocking upon my phone at this hour. Hello, Homeland Security. Checking up on subversive threats. Well, I can think of better things to do with public money than use it to harass citizens in the privacy of their homes. What's that? You're actually a contractor of Homeland Security. Public Freedom Incorporated. And you're coming to invade my house and seize my assets and beat me up? Well, that's different then. A strong private sector is what keeps our great nation strong and free. Gotta go. Another knock on the door. And as always, thank you for choosing YouTube as your form of mass communication.